Hey everyone, this video we're going to introduce the dictionary data type in Python. So a dictionary is just a data structure to hold numerous elements, but not just individual elements by themselves like a list would work. Instead, it's key value pairs. So there's going to be an association between two pieces of data for each entry in this dictionary. So that's a lot of words, but we're going to go through an example. And if you're coming from other languages, this is very similar to the way you'd create an object in JavaScript. It's very similar to an associative array in some other programming languages. So you might already have some experience with this structure. However, internally, this is a hashing structure. So the keys are hashed and we'll get into that in these videos. So an example would be something like emails. And you say this is a dictionary by putting curly braces. And then for the data, you put the key on the left with a colon and then the value on the right. So as an example, we could say Caleb, colon, and then we can put my email, which might be caleb at email.com. So this is a dictionary, very simple to create. In this situation, this is said to be the key, and this is said to be the value. And they're associated, meaning they have some connection. The email for Caleb is this. We can add extra data in here by putting a comma and then putting other values in here. So you can format it however you like, but let's just say we go in here and put all of the emails on their own line. So we'll create another one. And this will just be g at email.com. So that is Gal's email. Now what you can do is anytime just print this dictionary to see how it looks, see the structure, run it. And this is what it's gonna look like in an output. It pretty much looks exactly the same as when we defined it. But yeah, that's probably gonna come in useful if you're working with dictionaries and you just wanna see the values. Very easy to print, similar to a list. Just make sure you watch out for the colons because whenever there's a colon, the data on the left and the data on the right are associated. The left is the key, the right is the value, key value pairs. Now the key here has to be a data type that is hashable. And we haven't talked a whole lot about that, but when we have objects, they can have an internal method called hash, which basically takes the data and does some processing to convert it to an integer. And yeah, this is weird if this is the first time, but follow along for just a second. Let's say we want to just see what a hash of something would be. We can say hash. It's a function that's available for us to use, and it returns the hash value for a given object. So what we can do is we can pass in an example here, such as Caleb. So this is what's gonna happen with the key for this dictionary. And to see what this outputs, we can print it. So when we print this value, we get this number here. The actual number itself is totally irrelevant to us right now. The point is this data is converted to this number. So using this number, the dictionary is going to decide where to store the data. So this is the key, which is hashed, and that determines where this gets stored. So it's a little funky, but let's just imagine we had in memory eight spots and we could store eight pieces of data. Well, it might look something like this. The hash of Caleb modulus eight. We run this and we get the value four. So that is where Caleb would be stored at index four. So a process like this is going to happen to determine where the data gets stored. Now, we don't really have to worry about that because it's all behind the scenes. The only thing we need to know is that the key here is hashable, which the immutable data types are. So a string is hashable, a tuple or a tuple if you pronounce it that way is hashable. We haven't really talked about those, but just to show you guys that we can go in here and put another element just as an example. And a tuple is gonna be in parentheses and it's gonna have multiple values such as five, five, and that can have some value. This should work as well, no problems. But if we go in here and add a mutable type such as a list, that's gonna be an issue. So if I try to create a list with the value five, five, and give that some value, this is going to cause an error. And you can see unhashable type list. So if you get this error, that's what it means. It's meaning that the key does not have that method behind the scenes hash. So as a general rule of thumb, immutable types are fine. Mutable types are not fine. So stick to the immutable types, you know, strings, integers, tuples, and so forth. So now that we talked a little bit about how dictionaries work, let's talk about why you would want to use a dictionary. Well, obviously, if you need to associate two pieces of data, dictionaries work great. 
But there's actually another really good benefit of a dictionary, and that is the extremely fast speed to insert data and retrieve data. Due to the way data is inserted and retrieved, the size of the list does not matter. The speed to get data in and out is going to be the same. And this concept is known as big O of one or a constant time. So if you increase the size of the dictionary, it doesn't take longer to get data out of it. This is different than a list because with a list, you probably have to iterate through the list to try to find the data. So if you have a really huge list, it's gonna take a long time to get that data out. So dictionaries are very, very handy for fast lookups and fast inserts. But we're getting a little bit much into algorithms and data structures, so we're not gonna worry about that too much for now, but it's definitely nice to know. Next up, I wanna talk about how to retrieve data from these dictionaries, so stay tuned, it should be pretty fun.